In this video, I'm going to talk about the Steam revenue and stats for my latest game, Battleground Tycoon. The game came out in early September after spending 9 months in early access, so I'll cover the results of that, which so far have been pretty nice. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. And yep, there it is, there's the total number for first month sales for Battleground Tycoon on Steam. The game sold 3,700 copies for a total of $27,000 in gross revenue. The final total, including all of the sales in early access, is about 15,000 copies sold for a gross total of about 120,000. So that's a pretty nice number, it's certainly not Cuphead or Shovel Knight, but for a solo game developer it's very nice. However, by itself the number doesn't really tell the whole story. So first of all, this is gross revenue. After taking away Steam's cut, chargebacks, refunds and taxes, the net amount is quite a bit less than half of that, somewhere around 50k. I'm making this video in order to add another sales stats data point into the world. Having more sales data out there will hopefully help people have a more realistic expectation of what game development is like. If you're an aspiring indie dev, I would recommend you search around for the various developers that have already published sales stats so you can make a better, more informed decision before jumping in. So as you may know if you follow this channel, my main job is still making my solo indie games. I've been making games on Steam for 7 years now, with 8 games total published covering a variety of genres from action to strategy to management. Some of my games have been successful and some have been complete flops. So that's one of the main reasons why a single game sales number is not really telling the whole story. I would say if you want to be successful as an indie game developer and have a long career, it is essential to manage your finances wisely. Always try to keep enough money in the bank so you can withstand a massive flop because it will happen. There's an excellent talk by Jake Burkett of Grey Alien Games which perfectly encapsulates what has also been my experience. The title itself is perfect, it's called How to Survive in Game Dev for 11 Years Without a Hit. My own games have never been hits, but I'm still here after 7 years thanks to constantly learning, adapting and careful risk management. So go check out that talk. Another great one is by Jeff Vogel of Spiderweb Software, which again is the story of a long successful career without any massive hits. His business model is to focus on a very very specific niche genre, which are old school RPGs, and serve that niche audience as best as possible. Since he's been in business for so long, he also creates remasters of his very old games. That's yet another benefit of having a deep backlog over a long career. Yet another one is Cliff Harris from Positech Games. He's definitely made some games that you could call hits, like Democracy 3, Gratuitous Space Battles and Production Line. Also in business for over 10 years and his blog is full of excellent information. He also experimented with being an indie publisher and actually published Shadow Hand, which was made by Jake Burkett. So if you manage to stay in business for a long time and keep gathering an audience and industry contacts, that's another potential avenue you can take. And finally, I've also written a blog post myself a couple of years ago on my experience as an indie bottom feeder. I wrote that right before I published Hyper Knights, which was my fifth game, and in it I talk a lot about my strategy for surviving in this business for the long run. I'm still here, 2 years after that, so I'd say my strategy is working. Check out all of those links in the description. So here are some stats on the game itself. This has been my most complex game by far. The game has a total of 90,000 lines of code, so that's quite a bit, definitely more than any of my other games. I first started working on it in April of last year, which was also around the time that I started this channel, so that's a total of 17 months of development. For a few months I was more focused on the channel than the game, but for the most part that's working full time. I published the coming soon page on June of 2018, and the game was released into early access on December 10th, 2018. Then finally, after 16 updates and 9 months in early access, the game was fully released on September 2nd, 2019. The game launched into early access with 6000 wishlists and around 4000 followers, which are pretty decent numbers. Nowadays that is the most important metric for finding success on Steam. You need to announce your game as soon as possible and start gathering wishlists and followers right away. The way you find success on Steam is by selling a decent number in the very first few days and getting at least over 10 reviews. Once you do that, you're no longer competing with the trash games but rather only with the other great games. 
So having a large number of followers and wishlists will help you achieve that and stand out from the noise. So again, the stats for the first month of full release are 3,700 copies for a total of $27,000 in gross revenue. The full release was on September 2nd, with the early access release in December of last year. The final total in all of that time has been about 15,000 copies for a gross total of $120,000. However, again, do keep in mind that's the gross total. So after taking away Steam's cut, chargebacks, refunds, and taxes, the net amount is quite a bit less than half of that, somewhere around 50k. For 17 months of work, that's a decent amount, so I would certainly call this game successful. Over time, I will slowly discount the game as usual, and expect it to keep selling a decent amount for quite a while. That's the main reason why right now I've been focusing hard on the channel. Essentially, I have a couple of months to try to make this channel sustainable. If I can do that, then great, I can keep making these videos and providing them for free on the channel. If I can't do that, then I'll have to quickly get started working on my next game. If you like the videos and would like to help make that happen, you can support the channel by picking up the game bundle on the website. That contains 7 of my games with a heavy discount, there's a multitude of genres from action, strategy and management. The only game not included is Battle Royale Tycoon since it just came out, but you can pick that one up on Steam. So with this total number and 17 months of development, I would certainly consider this game a success. Not a massive success, but still a nice success. Here's some quick post-mortem takeaways. In terms of what I think went right, I would say the genre, the idea and the name. I first started working on the game as an exploration of AI in a battle royale game. So I built a map, put some units fighting inside it and found that it was quite fun to watch them fight. At the time, the battle royale game mode was all the rage, so I saw that as a nice marketing opportunity. Again, if you want to make it as an indie dev, you really need a very compelling concept. So I thought, okay, Battle Royale Tycoon is a very popular genre, and my most successful games have been my management games. So why don't I try to take the Battle Royale game mode and apply it to a tycoon? Then with thinking about how to make that concept work, I thought about one of the games that consumed my childhood, which was Roller Coast Tycoon. And just like that, the idea was formed. Make Roller Coast Tycoon, but with shooting arenas instead of roller coasters. The player would build the park, build the arenas and all the other buildings, and the guests would go in, queue up, shoot each other and have fun. Finally, the name I think was very well chosen. You might say that the name Battle Royale Tycoon sounds very generic, which is true, but it also very clearly communicates what the game is about. Which again goes back to how important marketing is nowadays and how you need to make things as easy as possible on yourself. It's better to go generic and capture some people's attention in the very first few seconds than to go extremely unique and get lost in all the noise. Developing the game also went quite well, making the queues and managing the buildings was a ton of work but a ton of fun. This was a very programming heavy game which means very difficult and complex, but programming is the part that I love the most about game development so it was also very compelling to make. In terms of what went wrong, the only thing I can think of is the time. Time is extremely valuable for an indie dev, and spending 17 months on a single project is way too much. The longer you spend on a game, the harder it will be for that game to turn a profit. Part of the reason for the long dev cycle was due to how I was trying to keep this channel running at the same time, so that led to me being overworked for quite a while, which had a serious impact on productivity. Another part is simply due to the genre. Again, the game is 90,000 lines of code long, so when you're trying to make something that complex, it will take some time. For my next game, I certainly aim for a much shorter dev cycle, probably around 6 to 8 months, which I think is the ideal time for a solo game developer. I also plan to document more of that whole process, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. Another thing you should keep in mind if your goal is to become a professional indie game developer is to keep yourself mentally sane and physically fit. That might sound weird, but believe me, it's very important. This is a marathon and not a sprint. So don't work yourself to death, remember to take frequent breaks and get up from your chair so you can keep doing this for a very long time to come. If you'd like to hear my general advice on several topics covering indie game development, check out the playlist linked in the description. I'm also planning on making a video doing a nice game dev time lapse of building the whole game, so stay tuned for that. I've done a video just like that for the development of Survivor Squad, and the video came out very nice. It shows the game being built from absolutely nothing, starting with the prototype, and 30,000 lines of code later, it becomes a proper game. There's a link in the description, so go check it out. Let me know in the comments if there's any topic you'd like me to cover related to solo game development or Steam. And again, if you'd like to play my games, you can pick up the discounted game bundle from the website and get Battle Royale Tycoon from Steam. 
Alright, so I hope this video was informative and helped put out another sales data point into the world so aspiring indie devs can make more informed decisions. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.